45, part one, patients with special challenges. Introduction. Patients may have a wide variety of special challenges, and it may be necessary for you as the paramedic to modify your communications, your assessments, your treatment, and your transport. You've got to remember that all patients are different, and in order to provide optimal care, you're going to need to be able to be flexible and adaptable to the situation. Patients often will have a chronic medical condition, sensory impairment, cognitive or emotional disorder, or any other list of anom anomalies. Impairments may include intellectual disability, 1% to 3% of the population, autism, which is slightly less than 1% of children, or some other form of developmental disability, which is 13% of children. Many life-sustaining therapies are handled by families and patients, and you've got to remember this, that they're going to typically be the experts. They're the ones that have the education needed to maintain these life-sustaining therapies, such as home devices or different things like that. Mechanical ventilation, IV medications, patients with complicated illnesses, and those who require invasive medical devices are no longer confined to acute healthcare settings. In 2014, more than 8.7 million patients received medical treatment in long-term care, skilled nursing care, hospice care, residential care, adult daycare, or home health settings. Many life-sustaining therapies, as we said, are now handled outside the hospital by families and patients. EMS is often called as a last resort when the patient cannot otherwise access healthcare services, attempts to manage a medical condition without assistance, and they fail. Caregiver abuse or neglect further complicates patient care. You need to be able to recognize signs and cues of abuse or neglect, especially in the vulnerable populations. As we said, the patients and caregivers are often the experts in their condition or impairment. You've got to have an open mind and a willingness to listen. You need to be able to understand that you're not the expert. You might have had just some amount of training. Unless you've had additional training in these areas, you've got to listen to the ones who have had additional education. Oftentimes, before patients are even discharged from the hospital, the families or the caregivers have to go through extensive training in order to care for the patient. Demonstrate confidence in enlisting patient expertise to determine best ways to provide optimal care. This, number one, provides optimal care and it minimizes the risk of mistakes, complications, or injuries. Other important or invaluable resources include online medical control, electronic medical reference materials, and also your coworkers' experiences. EMS providers and emergency departments often deal with economic and healthcare crisis. In 2015, nearly 43.1 million people were in poverty in the United States. As of the most recent information that I found on the U.S. Census Bureau website, around 37.2 million were in poverty in 2020, which is actually up 3.3 million from 2019. The definition of poverty is calculated by factors such as the number of people in the household, ages of people in the household, and total in income of the household combined. Poverty and lack of health insurance affects a person's health habits. Patients stop seeking or receiving preventative services. You'll see a significant increase in the incidence of severity or disease. And health care is often delayed until an emergency. And this is where you're going to come in. And this is often the frustrating areas for the paramedic when you get an emergency call for somebody that has a chronic condition that typically could be managed had the patient received proper care. However, you've got to remember that there is a health care gap and a health care disparity among people and patients in poverty often face many of the situations that you can't even imagine because of what they're dealing with. Chronic medical conditions require ongoing medication to control the disease. Patients may not get needed medications or care because of lack of insurance or poverty. Oftentimes, which is a really bad situation, but patients may have to choose between medical care and food clothing, shelter, or even providing for their families. Interruptions of medications can lead to medical complications. Loss of job or depletions of savings during ec economic hardships may lead to loss of health care services. Homeless people are prone to numerous chronic medical conditions, mental illness, and substance abuse. 
Medical care for homeless patients is more difficult because of environmental exposure, crime and violence, malnutrition, lack of hygiene. There are also high rates of pregnancy, infectious disease, and mental illness in the homeless population. EMS and emergency department assistance may be sought if a chronic medical condition becomes severe, there are no other health care options, or the patient thinks that they can go to the ER instead of going to jail. By federal law, EDs must stabilize patients in emergencies or in labor regardless of their ability to pay. This places a significant stress on the ED, and even many EDs have closed in recent years because of financial pressure and changes in the healthcare industry. EMS may be forced to transport patients farther or experience longer delays when turning patients over to emergency departments. In some cases, EMS providers may realize patients do not need transportation, but feel obligated to do so because of fear of legal liability and regulations against patient abandonment. Patient may request EMS services to get a free ride to the hospital or to bypass overcrowded ED waiting rooms. This often does not work in their favor. Even if other healthcare settings may be more appropriate, paramedics must be extremely careful to avoid legal liability. When people call for assistance, even if paramedics do not feel it is needed, the safest thing is to provide assistance. Never refuse to transport if requested, unless the EMS system and medical director specifically authorize the refusal. Healthcare services are provided through a variety of community-based services. Some healthcare organizations have come up with creative approaches to providing healthcare services. EDs are well suited for patients in crisis, but less optimal for issues of chronic medical conditions, such as medication monitoring, prescription refills, diagnostic testing, referrals, coordination among specialists, assistance with social needs and lifestyle modification, and long-term care. May see changes in education and scope of practice with EMS providers offering more primary care services, transporting 911 patients to healthcare settings other than EDs, and right now a real big push is community paramedicine programs. Governmental agencies and private organizations provide health care services through a variety of community-based health care facilities. Many immunizations are provided at little or no cost. Hospitals are frequently able to provide financial assistance, payment plans, low-cost health care services, help enrolling eligible people in government insurance programs. We're going to discuss a wide variety of patients with special challenges, and it's not just the ones that we just talked about. We're also going to discuss some other issues that you may face that are not your typical patients. In our next section, we're going to discuss care of patients when abuse or neglect is suspected and care of patients with terminal illness.